Welcome to the Lost Signals Discusses Film and TV. Using the revolutionary Manzor Mosi Thurlow scale, or MOTS, we scrupulously review these art forms with an emphasis on narrative structure. Join us for another entertaining episode. Hello, and welcome back to another marvelous <laughs> episode. Who <of> this <laughs> man? <laughs> Get out <laughs> of the Lost Signals Reviews Television and Film. I'm Jonathan E. Manzer, here with Rich Berry. Good evening. Scott Thurlow. For now, I still have both my eyes. <laughs> and Stephen Ramosi. How are you? We are doing Captain Marvel. So I will give the funny log line and the plot. So start off with, the Superman, the Superman exists, and she's an American woman. And with the plot is, Captain Marvel is... As I kind of alluded to, a Superman movie. It's a very highly powerful alien sort of come to Earth. Uh, and their origin story for that. Hmm. There diverges from the Superman thing, but the kind of thematic and plot elements come in. Uh, Carol Danvers uh, was a Air Force pilot who got uh, put into this kind of test uh they were doing uh, experiments uh, fast and light mm. uh, yeah. uh drive yeah and got uh attacked by an alien force named the kree she ended up getting adopted by the kree and also her brain wiped uh mm -hmm. she became a powerful superhuman by the tesseract um and the faster than light power uh the drive that was powering it uh she goes back to earth to hunt the dreaded scrolls but it turns out that the scrolls are the good guys, the Kree were the bad guys, and she embraces her humanity. I would like flies to say off in the space, like that would do. In in terms of this movie, maybe the scrolls are like the better guys, right? But there are there is a part, and I I think it's an important part of the movie where um, what's his face Talos says like my hands are just as dirty as yours. Mm -hmm. Like sure, he he acknowledges is, it. He acknowledges that he has been part of this war that's been going on between the, yeah, the two races. It, it, it's implied that the sides are very... Like, the Kree have the upper hand on this. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to make any references to current events in the world. <laughs> but the scrolls, yeah, are dirty because they're fighting a they're war like a against warfare. a genocide yeah, going yeah. on there. And, yeah, you can blame and say, oh, the scrolls got, like, are violent too, but they're violent for survival. I'm I it so I, it is it is implied that um I I don't know a lot of the I don't remember or know ever have ever known a lot of the comic history about the war but I'm pretty sure that both sides have been guilty of like pretty horrible like war crimes yeah, exactly but, like that. Which, and I'm oh, not no, it is. and I'm not sure like I don't remember who actually did the Kree actually start the war rich our I don't think comics that the expert. comics, though, are, they are matching the uh, events because the scrolls are. I mean, just it takes like the basic elements, right? It, right. It, it was yeah. it was more like a uh, almost a mutually agreed upon attack. Yeah, I feel like this is like this like ongoing war that's been going on for f forever, right? And like, I don't think anybody real right. Really nobody's knows. really clean in terms yeah. of this one. Uh, yeah, fair enough. But, it's more, it's and, more gray than it seems at first. We'll say. But I do like that they that you start believing like. As a viewer, you start believing one side, and then it switches mm -hmm. to the other side, and like you, you realize the humanity, I guess, of the scrolls who have been like de, like the humanity of the scrolls or the scroll manity of the scrolls <laughs> scroll who have been good. Uh, de scrollmanized. <laughs> <laughs> yes, throughout the movie. No, fair enough. You're right. Like it, it, the movie sets up one thing, and then you learn more information, and then you see like what exactly is happening and has been an unfolding with their history of, you know, conflict with each other throughout. So, and, right, and, sure. that's what's, and I think that they, the movie handled it really well with this complex intergalactic mm. politics going on. Mm. I think better than the original Star Wars prequels even did on that kind <laughs> of thing. Because in that short amount of time, I understood, like, where the Kree are, where the scrolls are. Mm. And ne and then the shifting of my perspective based on who's telling the story. And I thought that's a very... But we'll get into that in themes. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, I'm going to go into Carol Danvers as a character. 
I think that her plot line is not as focused, I think, as the other um, origin origin stories kind of have stuff. been, yeah. because you're kind of seeing through her eyes, uh, channeling this intergalactic war going on, mm. and that kind of at times dominates the narrative. Although I did get a sense of who she is towards the end, and I, overall, I said that the opening segments I was into. But I thought they were weaker. But by the end of this movie, I was actually really invested in what was going on. And I felt her triumph. And I like that. So I'm going to give it a two overall for that. But that's my thoughts. I'm going to give it a two as well. But like almost reversely. Like, so it starts basically in Medias Res. Like she's part of the Kree, like Strike Force essentially. And, like, and then they're going on a mission essentially. Um, and then she gets captured by scrolls, And that sort of kicks off the, the memory jogging thing where she starts to realize that she's not exactly who she thought she was like he has a different past on earth etc so like i think it was all fine like yeah like you said it was a if not standard origin story like a well done one at least but i'm gonna dock points purely for the ending and only because i felt that went on a little bit too long and like that's pretty much it like there's nothing wrong with the plot per se but i felt as if they could have condensed it wrapped it up a little bit it would have been wrapped up fine if it cut off like 20 minutes out of the end of the movie i think all right. Especially the fight scenes. I like that specifically. Well, here's the thing is I thought that the very the ending where she confronts uh Jude Law in Cree form uh was a really nice subversion on what would be a very generic ending. Yeah, like I get the it. The fact it just it, it turns out that he just was playing the role of the uh the boy the manipulative boyfriend kind of <laughs> yeah, at sure. the end and she just punches him out. I thought that was really well done because it could have made that protracted, but they decided I agree. to go so like, with a better punch. Yeah, I was, I was gearing up for that to be... Another like, fight, right? Yeah. And like, So like, maybe that sort of proves my point in a sense. Like, If they had done that, I would have docked even more points. But they didn't. But there was three fights before that, and now you're like, oh crap, now they have another duel. And yeah, you're right. It's like if they, if they it was cut, a good subversion. Yeah, maybe they should have cut like some of those fights out and then just like made the spaceship battle fight a little Yeah, more. or something like that. So like, I just I just felt it was a little bit like... it. I don't want to say the phrase overstate its welcome, but... It could have been a little bit more clipped, and I would have been fine with that towards the end. Other than that, though, I thought it was a perfectly fine and well-executed plot for what it was. So that's why I'm giving it the two. What do you guys think? I, I am going to be more on Ian's side, I think. Mm. I'm, I'm going to also give this a two, but I thought that the um, the beginning was a little bit messy, I guess I want to say. I don't agree like, with that, I, but I, I feel you, I guess. I there was a long. I mean, I get, it's it's. I know it's part of the intrigue of the movie, but there's a long. There's a long period in the beginning of the movie where, you, like, you're not sure what's happening, and also, I didn't really care. Like, I didn't care as much as I wanted to mm. care. I guess, like, I, mm. like all those fucking flashes and stuff that they had of her memory. I was like, let's just get to the fucking story, you know? Like, I don't. I don't know, and that might that might just be me personally. Uh, of course, like your mileage may vary on something like that mm. a lot, but like there was, um, I thought that they could have made that the beginning of the movie more succinct in a lot of ways. I feel it's just funny because I felt they could make the end of the movie more succinct. I didn't, you know, I didn't mind it in the fights at the end of the yeah. movie. I thought that I they know. all played pretty well, and each one of them had their own point to me. It's just funny. It seems like the three of us, at least for now, are agreeing that like. Just where it could have been more succinct, right? Is all. right. Yeah, I feel like think, uh, I feel like they had an idea of what. Uh, I could be wrong. I feel like in the script it was blocked out exactly what they wanted to show focus on. Mm. Like you have a, uh, like of course her meeting up with Fury, then her meeting up with Maria, and then yeah. the reveal at the end in the third act. Sure. And I kind of feel like everything else was like, kind of lost to the wayside. Like uh, with the beginning with you, like I was in the same boat where. I found myself having a hard time getting a chance to care about what was going on because right. it seemed like they were just like, "All right, let's get this shit out of the way, yeah, so we can mm. get her to fall through that blockbuster, and then we can start the rest of the movie." Mm. I, yeah. see, I see what you guys mean for sure. And it was like, this is the stuff that you want to focus on making people care, but like in the beginning when they do the like really out of like sequence scenes where you're like really confused, you're like, "Oh, is she crazy?" It, it almost like, it almost seems she has like, these like yeah. memories of a human. It's and and then you understand what that's about later on, but it's like I don't think they really needed to do all of that and like it almost seems that they they kind of missed another intro scene to kind of lead us into mm. maybe make it a bit more streamlined, perhaps. Yeah. Well, for, uh, to compare to another Marvel movie uh, with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, 
where the intro scene is uh, Ego with uh, Peter Quill's mother. And mm-hmm. you're all, all of a sudden you're being set into where this movie is going. And it didn't have that, I think. is mm-hmm. uh, Yeah, uh, d- 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 you're movie. right. Every like it seems like most of the movies so far have had like that op- like even Captain America before they went to show his story they had them the whole scene of them digging up his body finding mm-hmm. it and then they like set it back I think it would have benefited to have maybe like a uh, I don't know what's that uh, like a rack. cold open basically yeah, yeah. like I guess this one's basically in me is red so like yeah it's a little bit different as you guys mm-hmm. have pointed out versus the other origin ones from the Marvel but what does that mean you're giving it, Rich? <laughs> I'm giving it, too. Yeah. I, I just want to make a yeah. quick point before uh, we move on. That I think it's interesting. It's, I kind of knew the plot line of this going in. So it, the mystery was never there for me of her origin. Mm. And I wonder if it would have been more confusing or would have been more of a mystery had, you uh, not had I not known yeah. that. Yeah. Um, it's a good question. But, yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know. Like, I didn't know everything about the background of Carol Danvers going into this. I know a little bit, but like not um, everything. And I'm sure that this, this is, this is different changed a little bit from like the original, but like, you know, I'm sure the broad strokes are the same. Right. And, and like, watch it with the broad terms. <laughs> Go. Can't say that in this episode. I guess. <laughs> um, no, like I, uh, I thought that, that could have been like uh, that's basically it. I thought it could have been more focused right in the sure. beginning, and like after that, I thought it was fine. Like they did a great job. I loved, I loved uh, the plot lines with uh, Sam Jackson, and yeah, I thought that stuff was well handled. You know, like speak uh, of that, uh, 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 yeah, whatever. Uh, I, and and like Maria, and you know, Talos. I wanted, I needed more of her and Maria together. Yeah. Yeah, there was like uh I guess they they could slice out some fight scenes and have some more like background with that. Did the scene at um Maria's house in the middle of the movie feel to you guys like the scene at um April's uh house <laughs> in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? No. <laughs> but I mean it's funny you point that now out. Now that you point that, that yes. Yes indeed. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Like okay. without, the country, without the uh, emotional impact of what the Teenage Mutant I didn't think of it at the time when I watched it, yeah. Steve, but now that you mentioned, yeah, I can see it. It was very it was this very weird like let down moment like just the come down moment like in the middle of the movie <laughs> sure. that like reminded me a lot of that. <laughs> I feel right. like they could have benefited from like make it more like the turtles where like you have like <laughs> I mean, they have they a seance outside. They, yeah. no, uh, well, they stay for like a cut, like stay for a couple days or something like that, just yeah. to regroup. Well, well, the, the thing is, it, it pre- uh, preface of that was a huge loss by the turtles. Yeah. So the emotional weight was heavier in that movie. This one, and this is again part of the is that, yeah, they were trying to. It felt more like a national treasure movie in a way <laughs> where. Like it, there's no feel like a set, real setback. It's just a kind of a mm. we, we need to reach the end of this mystery before the other team. Well, the gets there. I guess the, the setback the right comes yeah. in the middle of that stay there when Talos shows up and brings yeah. the information. Yeah, but he, like, he shows up with the last clue. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, everybody else has figured this out, but you, Carol. <laughs> well, uh, anyway, but yeah, so it's a it's a two for that. I think it's two is all around. Man. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Mosi, themes. Themes. Um, well, there's a, a really strong and, and I think important theme of like uh, women empowerment, like female empowerment in this sure. movie. Obviously, that's like the obvious one. Um, there's this like, which I don't want to like go too too crazy on, but I guess I'll talk about it for for just a minute. Like there, there's an. There's a through line of like wanting to make her um kind of this like badass role model for stop stop hitting that sorry <laughs> with your microphone <laughs> any uh, intergalactic interference for for like this badass role model for like um young women and young girls which I think is like pretty fucking important and like yeah. it's cool to have some somebody it's there that effort. like you can look up to like like you know young boys have for uh you know Ever. Every other superhero yeah, exactly. movie in the world. Sure. Um, and the same way with like Wonder Woman. But there's also this theme of like um kind of you can never go home again, like over and over and over with her. Like, you know, uh this 
she loses her human life and then she loses her Cree life when she finds out about her previous human life. Um, mm. That I thought was pretty interesting. You know, like every, and I guess it's tied in with the like always stand back up mentality that she has, uh, which is like really important to her character, and you know, which is done very obviously in like a montage of her standing sure. back up later on in the film. But it wasn't a bad montage. But it was no, like, clearly no, like it, there. But yeah, it's 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 a really it's it's something that they really wanted to focus on, obviously, and. I think it's interesting that, you know, she kind of loses those things that are important to her several times, but every time finds something more powerful, right? So, like, mm. she loses her humanity and then finds her, like, Cree man minimal, yeah, her, her minimal Cree Captain Marvelness, mm -hmm. and then she loses her, like, connection with the Cree and becomes, like, fucking super saiyan basically um <laughs> sure which is like you know a really interesting uh avenue that they that they went on that I, I really kind of liked that like losing something makes you realize something important about yourself right like going through that makes you realize something important about yourself and makes you stronger in the end um so I'll leave it there if you guys want to... No, I mean, I don't disagree with any of that, and certainly I think there were um, well-handled themes that you pointed out. But one of you mentioned, uh, describing the plot, that one, what I wanted to bring, this might even bleed over into a tagness, which I think is me next anyways, but the you know the gray morality ethics of war, essentially, mm. right? which was present, of course, in the conflict between these Krees and the Skulls. And like, yo, know, one side, you're told one side is on the right side, you know, quote, unquote, and then you see the other, from the other perspective of the side they're fighting against, and, like, none of them are really, like, I guess you could say the scrolls are more, uh, they're, they're, they're being oppressed in some general sense by the Kree Empire. They might not have always been. Right. It could have been back and forth. At this point in time, yeah, sure. they are, uh, so like, the yeah. victims. So I thought oh, yeah. that was interesting because that leads over to, uh, what was his name? Talos, who's the main villain. Yeah. So I keep all these alien names straight. But, I mean, like, of course, he's sort of a one dimensional, like, representation of, that like aspect like the guerrilla warfare fighting against you know doing terrorist acts essentially like what are deemed terrorist acts but against an empire who's trying to like crush them the thing is, i don't think like their whole plot is to find a group of refugees that were held sure. uh, in this <laughs> lab and, like, stasis, or orbiting earth like that's their whole uh, mission in life is to rescue people who are lost sure. It's so I want to build off that. I okay. read an article about how this is a terrible movie because it promotes um, the military industrial complex, and I think that the entire thing was total bullshit because they're yeah, saying that like Missed the, the idea of, of like yeah, she's an air force commander and you too could be great if you. No, I, no, I don't think that's, that's sort of the Kree is the imperialist nation. Yeah, here and that's that kind of what are, I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. But I'm building off of yeah. that, and you see that they have all the chips on their side and that they're creating a narrative that the scrolls are this terrorist faction showing when when you meet them they're not they might have done things they might have shot some rockets into uh tel aviv <laughs> but it's from gaza which is being completely oppressed by sure. uh another I sorry, I just said I was gonna make this political, <laughs> but it's I was say, ten minutes ago. <laughs> nice non real life allegory, but sure. Yeah. Um, but it, it's very much has that undercurrent of right. don't believe exactly. the imperialist narrative mm -hmm. about people they're going to war with. And I thought that was very, uh, very interesting. Point yeah, I would. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. And then unless you have a follow up to that, exactly, I would just wonder. Nope. Uh, I was looking into. I was thinking about the idea of female archetypes in narrative, and how often either you have female heroes who are incredibly sexualized or you have, on the other hand, like uh, the Briands from Game of Thrones, which are very masculine mm. uh, style heroes. I think that they did a... Uh, this is going to protagonist a little bit too, but I think that they did the, a neutral face protagonist in a way for... And that's been a big criticism of this. Mm. Like, why doesn't she show more emotion? And I think that's people uh, trying to find those old archetypes and apply it to her when she's actually playing... I think a very balanced uh, right, takes like female sort of aspects lead. from each of those. Things. If yeah. it was a male with the same personality qualities that you can imprint yourself upon, mm. uh, this would have no male would be like, this, like 
why isn't he showing more emotion? They would be like, this guy's awesome. I think mm. they did a great job of developing uh, her character that way. Yeah. And another point in terms of that is like, I think they did a good job um, including other uh, strong in their own way female characters yes, in, good in point terms of this. So well. like she didn't shoulder the burden of like her entire gender. She wasn't the only, you know, good female character in this movie. And that's important too. Like you, you can't just, not every woman is the same, so she doesn't re- represent every woman. She even had her own roadie. You know? Yeah, exactly. Sure. Uh, let's let's not. <laughs> <laughs> it, it reminded me quite a bit. Of I know, I know it did. I know it did, but like, yeah, I have, I have a problem with uh, white Go men on. superheroes and their black best super friend. No, uh, I feel like there's way too many of those now. <laughs> Fair point. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's true. Like, I mean, not gonna argue against it. <laughs> um, but for themes, like, I'm th- I also I, well, I just wanted to point out the undercurrent of like the conflict, Nate, the thing that you built mm-hmm. upon that I said, and every like you said, Stevo. So I'm probably gonna give it a one overall. And then anyone, if you have something else to pull out, no, I or really say don't have, about it. Yeah, I really don't have anything to add to. I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to briefly make a point about. Uh, carol's uh relationship to maria actually because um i don't know i feel like there was like an undertone of like possible romantic relationship Mm. there or something like i didn't really get that out of they were like she was there like i mean i guess they maybe they're just best friends or whatever but like she was there all the time uh you know she was like an aunt or like a fucking aunt or whatever to her uh daughter I mean, I get, like that's the same thing, but like you know, it it, it just seems like if um, there were men, would you have suggested there's a romantic undercurrent? Yes, there? I think that uh, Tony and Rhodey were got together as well. <laughs> no, no, definitely Steve and Bucky. Oh, oh fuck certainly. yeah, <laughs> of course. I mean, I think that's the clearest one. <laughs> um, I shipped them a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm sorry. What are you gonna say? But I, I don't know. There, there was. Uh, I, I thought that was a possible avenue. Uh, I guess that you guys do not agree. With that. I mean, That's not fine. that I don't agree. I just didn't see it at the time. But I, I'm not saying that you can't. I also see think that, that would uh, cheapen her character if they did it. Not to say that there's anything to be wrong, but the idea of having it's a pseudo masculine quality that a screenwriter would put into her when she, as an independent woman. Um, uh, power. I think that she's stronger that way. If, if they went that way, power to them. I just that's my personal. Uh, no, I I I, I think I'm more lean towards what you're saying there as well. I feel like in terms of that, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you mm-hmm. don't, right? Because yeah, it's like, oh, probably. what she's not sexual at all. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Or like, or why does sex have to be or part why of does sex have to be part of it? Yeah, of course. Like, it's it can go either way. Sure. Anyway, but I'm still. Giving I think themes, we're all giving themes a one, a generally right? solid one. Okay. Now, since we're, we might all be the antagonists, you know, <laughs> but, um, uh, not, Scott, not me, never me. So like, I sort of just like, maybe somewhat, like I said, bleeds over. So I guess if you want to call, um, Jude Law, who's, what was Jude Law's character name? Yon Rog. Yon, Yon Rog. Rog. Yeah. And, uh, and Talos. So like, yeah, they represent, again, like they're the strike force or like at least the, the rebel leader and the, um, the platoon leader of the respective Korean skulls. And sort of uh, Carol slash um, Captain Marvel works for like works with both of them at various times. So like, but again, like I kind of want to go back on my default abstract thing of you never know who's right in a conflict between two different species or whatever. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I have that trouble all the time. <laughs> yeah. Like who should I pick in the <laughs> X versus Y war? Given I'm not either of them. So like yeah man like I thought it was but I think it's like making a choice between the grizzly bear or the salmon yeah in or this like case. I guess but <laughs> but I'm I, I don't know if that's a one to one ratio but I I know what you're saying I know what you're getting at for sure so I'm saying like to me though like that kind of was the antagonist like they sort of switched roles right like oh we're hunting down Talos because he's doing bad shit but no no he's trying to rescue his people who are trapped or at least stuck adrift and now uh, Yag whatever Yag Sargoth Yag yeah, yeah, Rock Yag yeah, Rock. <laughs> Now he's like he really like he's hiding things from Carol. He knows the true history, but it's better for them if she doesn't know it because she can work for them and use her powers on their side. So I think, like you said, like one of one of you said, like he's like a bad boyfriend, like manipulating her, like essentially. 
So I think they sort of like share like antagonist ish role, but again, be I don't know if I could really like, like consider re- Talos an antagonist. Then. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like as represented though, like from what you're told, of this side represents this, and the other side represents that. Well, for the first half, he is the antagonist, but not on his choice, right? Like by default, but, uh, by what yeah, she stole, exactly. Right. So I think that's an interesting thing to like. You don't know who to root for, or like she doesn't at least because he only has part of the story. And as it slowly unfolds, I mean, you never That's trust That's an interesting shape question. Do you need to? Does the antagonist need to have? Um, do, do, does the antagonist need to be actively antagonizing someone to be an antagonist? If the perception is that he's antagonizing, or, or I mean, the hey, scrolls we, in general, we've are... come up this against this before for sure. And I think, like, I would say mostly, like, <laughs> yes, but not necessarily. I guess to answer that. Specific, specific question, Sivo. I just to answer the question on our scale. I think I'm gonna give it a one. Like you can sort of like spread out antagonist credit of almost everything I just mentioned. Now, whether or not you think the personification of one or the other is effective to whatever degree, but I still think it was to me affected enough throughout. Even if they switched roles or even like switched sort of credit at some times. I don't know if I can give any of them a one. <laughs> That's fair. I feel like they were like. Why not? They were barely... Inta- I mean, they were antagonistic, but they were so easily dealt with. Mm-hmm. Like, there was... Like, li- like every time they ran into any any of them, like, they were handled by the end of the scene. Even the Supreme Intelligence, who was supposed to be, like, the be-all, end-all, I never about that. fucked up and just, like, gave her her, like, heroic second <laughs> win. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm... I think Jan Rog is the clear antagonist anyway and like um he was just like this shitty nuisance that she really needed to get past you know the bad boyfriend yeah thing. exactly i guess like, but she's still like he, he always like, like he thought... always popped up in the back like almost like he was trying to do the uh like give her the hulk lullaby yeah <laughs> it's like hey viewers Yo, you gotta handle your emotions well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. like he, he he like took away some of her confidence so i think that's an antagonistic yeah. element i guess once she like was able to see what he his manipulation. He's through his manipulation. I mean, it's pretty heavy-handed what they yeah, were going for. That's what for I'm saying. <laughs> but so I still think it's effective. But I, yeah, I thought it was effective you might not well. agree. So. No, I agree with you. <sighs> <laughs> nice I, noise. I did think it. I I did think that the storyline was effective based on the way it went. But I don't know if he was an effective antagonist. I'm gonna. I think I'm going to give this a zero. That's actually. fine. Like, I get it. I, I see that side of it. I'm just giving it a one on my end. Right. And you're giving it a zero to the end of the day, Rich? Oh, yeah. Okay, fair enough. So Scott won. Yep, so I think we're divided on this uh, issue, my friends. Ian won as well, right? Yeah, I, 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 I like it. I was engaged with the story. I thought the scrolls were interesting villains for them to fight when it was the perception that they were villains, and they were mm-hmm. on different sides of the war. And I thought that he played enough of a role both pre-movie and throughout the movie, mm. of being manipulative, like lying to her constantly, mm. uh, manipulating her. And the fact that he was so easily dealt with once she realized what he was and what he was doing, um, I think is a very kind of an empowering statement there. Mm. Yeah. Um, that once you stop allowing him to feed you bullshit, you walk you right out that door. Yeah. <laughs> and, sure. I wish we could right. play copyrighted music right now. Because well, we'll put it we in post. Have, uh, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> Super post, post after man. copyrights don't exist anymore. Yeah. All right, uh, Rich, on to protagonist. So Nick Fury. <laughs> <laughs> Carol Danvers, she she was a solid protagonist. I liked her. She, uh, she was very confident in everything that she did. The second, like the second she hopped on screen, like when uh, I think the the first scene to really illustrate that was when they do their first mission to save the uh or the rescue mission, the spy guy to the mm-hmm. to save the spy, and he's just like, all right, the only it's like we're gonna have to go, and she's like, all right, on it. He's like, hey, 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 hey hold it. She's like, no, no, I've got it. He's like, no, no, we're gonna we're gonna do the smart way, and like go around. Um. <laughs> I said before neutral face protagonists for women to imprint themselves upon 
I thought was effective. I was rooting for her the entire time, even though was it it was a Superman thing. I, I never find Superman the most interesting person in a film. Sure. Uh, I get what you're saying. But it's he's an ideal. He's not a a character to really like get emotionally involved with. Mm-hmm. I disagree so, though with Superman. Like his his moments as Clark Kent when he's like struggling with being the uh when he's struggling with the idea that he has to be the symbol of hope and like inspire all these people and he's still just like a kid from Kansas. And I'm hoping that that character develops as the movies go sort forward. Of carries through it. Yeah, exactly. Well, like I so when uh after seeing this I had the uh I think I came away from it the same way I came from Captain America and Thor. Well mostly Captain America where, like, it took me a couple movies to really get behind him mm-hmm. as a person. Yeah, like, it yeah. took me till after the – it took me to Winter Soldier. Mm-hmm. Like, Avengers was, like, a good step forward. But, like, Winter Soldier was where it really drove home, like, who he was and, like, why I should give a shit about him. And it actually made me go back and want, rewatch the first movie and, like, get more out of it. So, mm-hmm. I'm, I think – I feel like – Something Brie like, Lar- like I mind. feel like Brie Larson was still getting a feel for Carol Danvers as a character, mm-hmm. and like you could see, there were moments, especially the moments when she was with uh, Maria and Monica, when you really got to see, like, get mm. more of who she of was. Yeah. Until they decided Thor was a buffoon and Thor Ragnarok, <laughs> yeah. I didn't particularly uh, care for Thor too much. I liked him as a character, but I didn't care for him. Uh, and I think that they're going to find their way with. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you have to set it yeah. up somewhere. So, like, I mean, I like Brie Larson a lot as an actress, and I think she did a pretty solid job mm-hmm. as Carol Danvers. Yeah, like, you're right. Like, they didn't, they did a good job of not forcing her into any one archetype over another, and sort of like taking elements from the ones that you do recognize. Mm-hmm. But then, again, not quite pigeonholing. So, like, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm interested in her story. It's a good setup, and of course, I don't know where else to say this, but like, <laughs> it's sort of. <laughs> It's not a filler movie, but because something has to come up out mm. before Endgame, mm. it was this well, one. I think but, she's going to play an important part. Yeah, in of course. Yeah. So, like, the reason that this movie came out before that is that. So, it just has to play that part of, like, being the one that the gap between it. But nevertheless, yeah, I enjoyed her throughout pretty much as an interesting protagonist. Do you think she needs to work on her snarky banter? Well, I want to get to that when we get to dialogue. <laughs> so, like, I kind of agree with that. But just overall, it's a general character and the portrayal. I think was damn solid, so I'm probably gonna end up with a one. So like, everybody's uh, talking about her as like this kind of emotionless or like neutral or whatever. I mean, I see where people are coming from. I guess kind of with that, but like, she had that. I mean, she has emotion. She had that. She was devoid of him. (laughs) Relax. (laughs) She had that snark. Yeah, because you never interrupt people ever throughout the whole. Shut the fuck up. Let me talk. <laughs> Jesus Christ. She had, she had that snark like the entire time that uh you know like went that was a through line throughout. Like whenever somebody mm-hmm. tried to give her a, an mm-hmm. order, she bucked against it. And like you know, whenever somebody tried to get big with her, she was like no, I'm the biggest person in the room. And I thought mm-hmm. that was like an important aspect to her um to her personality. Now was it written the best that it could have been in this movie? Probably not, but I think that it will be going. It will be written better going forward, and as, yeah. as she and the writers get more of a feel mm-hmm. for who she, Carol Danvers is. Um, but I, I'm a little bit. Um, I don't like everybody talking about how she's like emotionless, right? She's like, not. No, she's, she's not, not emotionless. At all. By neutral face, I don't mean. I, I, emotionless. I, I didn't mean exactly yeah. what you were saying, but like. You have all the fucking crybabies on the internet who are like, yeah, "Yeah, she's emotionless or whatever. And that's a stupid fucking thing to say. (laughs) Like, she's, I think she's more emotional than certain other, uh, it's like, she's more emotional than Thor was until Thor Ragnarok, I think. But also not as a, not as emotional as they made her out to seem at some points in the movie. Like, if you remember correctly, like they're, like Jan Rog mostly is trying to like get her to calm down and temper her. He's like, oh, you need to, t- you need to. Well, that's the entire point. He's like gaslighting her yeah. through the whole movie. You know. Sorry, oh. I interrupt. <laughs> now that I just yelled at Scott for it and then I interrupted. Oh, you. hypocrisy <laughs> is the greatest, my friends. <laughs> but no, I see, I see what you mean there. But I'm just saying, I, I'm cutting up sort of both ways, and so end up giving it a pretty solid one mm. for her at the end of the day. Yeah, I agree. Steven, yes, yes, one for that. I, and I am excited to see what she accomplishes. Yeah, I'm. I, I, I'm like you said. I'm looking forward to see what they do with her next, and if after Endgame. Yeah, 
or whatever happens, whatever they're going to do in phase five or six or phase 10,000 of MCU. <laughs> Phase ten thousand. <laughs> I heard he's got sixty years. Worth. I've heard he's got sixty years worth of stories. <laughs> yeah. uh, Stanley has already filmed all of all his cameos. cameos. For that. <laughs> he does have a bunch, right? Yeah, yeah I think so. So uh, I'm on to supporting cast now. Cat monster <laughs> one. What is it? Flurkin? What the hell do they call it? Yeah. <laughs> so part of this Goose? movie, and I kind of wish mm. they went a little bit stronger with this, was the Men in Black vibe. <laughs> that they had for parts of it. I, I really enjoyed their kind of when they explored the humor of having alien stuff around. Um, <laughs> but I have to bring up Nick Fury, uh, or Fury as everyone calls him. Uh, <laughs> he was such a necessary character in this, more so than I think any sort of character is the grounding character. Mm. Uh, because Brie Larson's Captain Marvel is, is what, or plays an alien, you know, and thinks she is. And he has to be the humorous kind of grounding side sidekick here. And I think he plays that really well. A naive Nick Fury, uh, and more innocent Nick Fury, I think <laughs> yeah. C.L. Jackson did a fantastic job with uh playing that role. Uh, Phil Coulson was in this briefly. Yeah, man, I, I, I don't think he ha- added much to it aside from a moment. It was more like nod. a hey, remember yeah. Coulson? He's here too. Um I guess I put it in the scrolls, uh, which were had some good comedic lines. Uh, towards the end of the banter about uh, you're our uh, pilot or I'm not the engineer kind of thing. I you said, you're a science guy. You couldn't yeah. figure that out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that does um, mean. Uh, and Maria did a fine job. I don't really have much to say about her. And then I'm going to pass it off to you guys. Yeah. I mean, like you covered most of it. Like, of course, Nick Fury is like the most important, has the most screen time for a reason. Like he's like the through line of, of every Marvel shit ever, like going back to even Iron Man. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like he did a good job at, as you said, sort of a, a greener <laughs> Nick Fury, if you will. And yeah, everyone else is perfectly fine. I have no complaints really. He plays the role of the uh, us to ask questions. Yeah, I mean, he's, your, he's basically on. your audience surrogate because yes. he has to explain everything, which I'm going to get to which in Which is dialogue. odd considering that he's often. Usually he knows everything man. that everyone else. <laughs> sure. Actually, I honestly did not expect S.H.I.E.L.D. to be this green. Mm. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, they. I feel like he'd be a little bit more on the ball with the alien stuff, with the, all the weird shit that they've had to deal with since the 40s. <laughs> With like shrinking people, Nazis with magic weapons. Yeah, but and, I guess, but like that was all on Earth at least. Like, you know, these are. I know, but still, like, like, the but like with Nazis, like, they're not aliens. But like, <laughs> yeah, the, exactly. but like the Tesseract, mm. like he uh. should have known what that was based off of the fact that the SSR, the precursor to Shield, was built specifically to deal with. They also have a line in the f- in Iron Man, which they hadn't even named it Shield at that point. Right. So uh, I, I guess they're ignoring That's a little all lot. Of <laughs> Dude, I didn't remember. I would never remember that, but I believe you, of course. But I'm I'm still giving like most, most of the shield is just they just said the entire name for some reason. <laughs> I want to I want to mention uh, Ronan in this mm-hmm. sure, as, sure. as yeah. you mentioned earlier, and you get a little more of his backstory, which is nice. Uh, and true, I forgot about him. You got the sorry. Go ahead. Right, do you mind if I build off that quickly? Yeah. So it's really interesting that you get his. I think I mentioned it precast when we were talking about. Uh, you get actually the backstory for a villain from a movie from three four years ago. Uh, that makes him an interesting character. Now, like, it's, it's so it's such a weird thing. Like, yeah. I think I would enjoy Guardians of the Galaxy one now, knowing why he acting the way he did. <laughs> yeah, it's very strange, but I mean, it's it's cool. Uh, you have the Cree like hit team, mm. who are all one note characters, mm. but they're fun, you know, like in their own ways. Honestly, I like that little bit about uh. The one guy freaking out about seeing a scroll take his face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're all talking. Like, did like it devolves into them talking about how handsome he is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was a nice little comedic little uh, um, scene there. Or non handsome, if you will. Yeah. Uh, it's like, which is weird because objectively you are quite handsome. <laughs> <laughs> you have uh, the scroll like civilians who are all like really convincing and like it's just a, a really tender moment when when they get them back i honestly thought they were setting up that family they, back and i stuff. thought they were setting up that they were going to just stay on earth yeah it's like they already had them <laughs> closed they already <laughs> had them like, hanging out playing the games and then you had that scene with uh but then why would monica playing with like telus's daughter yeah 
But then why would Captain Marvel go away? You know, you needed them to leave for that. Well, to end the end, to end the war. I but mean, I she also, doesn't need them to go do that. <laughs> I also want to mention uh, Talos uh, drinking the soda a la Sam Jackson in Pulp Fiction is so perfect. Mm-hmm. If you guys have not seen the memes on Facebook yet, go check them out. <laughs> it's amazing. I love the fact that he decided to keep wearing that blazer that he there's, had. <laughs> there's, also, there's also a scene where Sam Jackson and uh, Clark Gregg as Coulson are s- sitting in a car and it's shot the exact yeah, same way that. as a shot from I was going to go that in style, but yeah. So they really go in on the like Pulp Fiction Sam Jackson references. Well, like it's all the 90s references yeah. and that being yeah, one of them. Exactly. And funny because Jules is one of the coolest people of all time <laughs> and Nick Fury in this is... <laughs> <laughs> Such a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> Before he becomes true Nick Fury. Yeah. yeah. Or everybody just calls him Fury right now. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's it's one for me. That's going to be a one, a pretty strong one for me in supporting. All right, well, keep talking with dialogue. All right, I will. Um, the dialogue in this was pretty was pretty good. It it's not super memorable. I know you Scott, you're going to disagree with this one, but um, it's not super memorable. But, but I think there are a couple of scenes that I really enjoyed, and um, in terms of the dialogue, Talos' dialogue stands out as like I really enjoyed when he was on screen and, and, you know, working with other characters and, uh, the, I, I liked the, uh, the back and forth between, uh, Fury and Danvers and Carol Danvers. So, I mean, I don't have much to say about it, but that's kind of my thoughts. Like it was fine, but I told you I was going to do this. So within like relative to all the other Marvel films, there was much, much better banter and exchanges and, like, what are you, like, jabbing each other that I've seen from many Marvel films. So, like, I'm not saying the dialogue in Cat Marvel was bad at all. It wasn't. It just wasn't up to par to me relative to the rest of them. So, like, it was fine. Like, many of the jokes did not land for me. I didn't hate them. I was like, meh. Kind of, meh. Meh. Everyone's like, yeah, okay, that was fine. That was fine. I'm just saying. So, overall, it was a bit more, I guess I'll say, uh, lackluster. So, like, again, not terrible, not, like, eye-rolling or anything like that. Not cringeworthy, but just not quite up to snuff for what I was expecting and for what I've come to expect from a banter-ish Marvel movie. So, I'm giving maybe a softer zero at this point, but I'm looking at a soft sure. zero. Yeah, the, sorry, I just wanted to agree with you. The jokes were hit or miss, but good enough for me, I thought. Please go. I Not good enough for me. I, I we already mentioned some of the good banter uh, in previous conversations. Not good. Yeah, it is hit or miss in, on retrospect of it. But I left the movie with a good feeling. I didn't leave it with looking at the dialogue as necessarily a poor thing. And you're right; it's not up to snuff with some of the better movies. But I think it's better than some of the weaker Marvel movies. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's really, I think in general, this is a middle of the road. Yeah. Uh, I would say uh, that. Uh, but I think maybe better than the average one. Not, so I'm going to, on that basis of that, nothing sticks in my mind as poor and a, I have a couple of good memories. I'm going to give it a one. You know what? I feel like when the dialogue hit, it was because of the delivery. And I feel like, major, like all of the supporting characters, did a very good job with what they were given. So with that, I'll give it a one. And from, my final thought is like, okay. yeah, it is to me, it's middle of the road. And that's why I'm like leaning towards a zero. It's like average ish, even like a smidge below average, but not bad. Let me be clear. But for me, it's going to fall on the side of a zero is all. Well, keep speaking with style. All right. So this one also, not quite to the degree, as I just said about dialogue, but I mean, it was an action Marvel movie. Like it looked cool. Like, I guess I'll leave the soundtrack thing for us all to discuss because it's probably like one of the bigger things being that it's a, you know, retroactively set in the 90s and so forth. So they're using a lot of references, even as you mentioned the Pulp Fiction thing and mm. many others. But just, you know, as a Marvel, as a spectacle, if you will, Marvel movie, perfectly fine. I, the fight scenes weren't confusing. And that was maybe, like I said, they went on too long, but that was more of a plot um, flaw, if you will, than style flaw. So I'm looking at a pretty solid one, but with that, I will open it up to. You guys speak about whatever aspect of style you wish to I address. I just want to bring up a quick thing, because you already brought up my genre thing. Uh, and I already mentioned that Mar- it's a serviceable Marvel movie, yeah. if not better than that. I love 
shapeshifters. I love the <laughs> the initial and they kind of ruined it with the uh, uh, the trailers, but the old woman and yeah. the train yeah. and, and them dealing with those kind of fight scenes. I, I really enjoy that. I wish they did more with it, uh, but I, I enjoy what they had. So. Yeah, I I agree. I thought that they they did a good job. Like I, I you know, I'm I'm more of a nostalgia guy, I think, than than, than everybody else. But uh, I I really liked all the '90s references and oh, yeah, and things like that. And, and you know, the songs were not the best choices. I feel like they were hit at times. Yeah, I don't I didn't think, but like, you they know, could, they could have done a better job of fitting songs to scenes. scenes yeah. yeah, I agree. Um, but all the like. The really obvious references and the not so obvious references to the '90s, I thought were like just fun. Like I feel like that was like uh, you know the director, the writers having fun, like with sure. that type of stuff. And I thought that the fight scenes were actually really well realized. Like a uh, good spatial, um, you had a good spatial understanding of what yes. was going on, even when things that. got really, like really intense, uh, which is sometimes like hard to do, I mm-hmm. guess. Uh, so. Yeah, I, I'm gonna give it a, a fairly strong one, I think. Yeah, um, let's see. Like, fight scenes are pretty good. There were a couple that were a no for me. Uh, like we said, the song choices could have been a little better. I love the '90s. Uh, what was it? The when they're uploading? Oh yeah, the video thing. When they're uploading the uh, <laughs> the recording from the black box, the fucking disc. Yeah. yeah, like that drawn out scene was. Fantastic! Right, like, like that I was loved, a hit. I that loved, was a hit for me. Yeah, I loved every minute of that. It was mm-hmm. hilarious. Mm-hmm. That was great. But like, uh, two songs that kind of took me out of it. Uh, one was the uh, Nirvana choice, specifically because that song came out when she wasn't on Earth. So there's no possible <laughs> way it would have been in her memory. Yeah. So they could have picked something else for that. And like, I know why they picked that No Doubt song, but it was just it was too, too obvious. Of it's too on the nose for me. Like I said prior, like it was, it would be like if Black Panther had that C before "I'm Black, y'all" song playing in the background while him and Killmonger fought. Yeah, it's it like just obvious, a little. It was a little much. Obvious song. It was a little much. They could have. They could have. They could have picked another one to get the same point across <laughs> without it being that. I don't know the name of the songs, but "Don't Go Chasing Waterfalls" was the one yeah. that just felt really. It's just called Waterfalls. It's what, yeah. yeah, that was. I don't know why they picked that song. I don't know. I, I like the song. Don't get me wrong. But I know. Just, it, there are there yeah, more know, than just I, those five I, songs in the 90s. I understand. Oh, I do have the to, only one that, like, the one that fit perfectly for me was when uh, when Maria was working on the uh, the plane. She had the radio going on. It was like she was listening to 98.7 yeah. <laughs> Kiss FM. And I was like, all right. Like, I've had those days where I've been out in the garage, like, watching my uncle work <laughs> on his car. And, like, this is playing in the background. Sure. All right, I have a question for you. Because I don't know where to fit this in. I knew that Nick Fury was losing his eye in this film. And I assumed it had to do with the cat because they kind of show it there. Mm. Were you... I, and I like the mystery, that the, the, the drawn out thing of that. Where it's always this kind of, is this going to happen mm-hmm. now? Wait, wait. How's Remind me eye? of Hot, oh, uh, yeah. Hot Time yeah. Machine. Yeah, yeah. Right? No, yeah absolutely. <laughs> it, it, really well done. Were you disappointed with how it actually went down? Yes. I wasn't disappointed, but I think it could have been better, I guess. So, like, I, I, that's a weird thing to say, no? No, I was disappointed because it was a quiet scene, and the cat's just like, meh. Like, oh, oh. Oh, my, yeah, it'll be guess. fine. And then, like, all of a sudden, he's missing it. Well, no, someone goes, like, yeah. no, it won't be I fine. I know, so, but, like, st- but, st- yeah. but still, like, it could have been, like, maybe like maybe if it was one of the tendrils, like, when he was swallowing uh, the Kree, and, like, know, one of them, like, went cool. back and, like, got yeah. him. He's like, oh, mother flirking. And, like, <laughs> I, think, I think it'd be great if you... Start off Endgame with a scene from the nineties where he's like, "Ah, oh, my eyes finally better," and then he just gets shot in the face or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But I mean, I guess see what you mean. Like that's a funny question. But overall, like for example, like I just want to point out, like, yeah, they had like a whole song, a garbage song. So like, uh, they were female fronted like grunge bands. Like that's garbage fun. Garbage song. <laughs> It's uh, it was only happy when it rains, yeah, no, no. but yeah, but you know what I mean. Like, like yeah. most, like all of them, all, all of them were. I noticed that. Yeah. Like all of them were female fronted songs, except for Nirvana. That was the yeah. only one. <laughs> and like again, like because nineties obvious is refer- like obvious nineties reference is obvious. Yes, but there could have been better nineties. I mean, songs, I totally agree with that. But I think think overall, like the actual again, the the effects and so forth and everything else was perfectly Ooh. fine. And the shots. Even could have done Polly. Huh? So could have done Polly by Nirvana. What are Jesus Christ. Oh my God. <laughs> 
Anyway, <laughs> so I, I what, what I forgot what I, sorry. I'm unsure what people are giving this. Rich, you giving it a zero? No, I'm. I, I was actually going to launch into why I'm going to give it a one. Okay, go on. So like, on. uh, I I seen this mentioned somewhere else. Like they did a really good job of like making this a '90s style action. Yes, adventure. Yes, movie. good call. Mm. Like the like between like almost the, like an MIB kind of thing. Yeah, yeah like uh, like between the uh, understated car chases, like they didn't go too mm. too far with the uh, special effects, even though. God knows they've got the budget. <laughs> yeah. Like they uh they kept like they uh kept the tech so low key that the uh anytime any of the uh Cree stuff showed up, it looked completely alien and futuristic. Mm-hmm. And it like had that a, beeper. Yeah. <laughs> and think, yeah. Yeah, and I think that uh uh oh yeah, also the uh they re- recreating like a lot of uh, a lot of uh, '90s movies, famous scenes like you said with uh, the Pulp Fiction. Mm-hmm. Then you uh-huh. had like the the Chasm fight from like ID Four. <laughs> yeah, all, all that did. stuff. Oh, yeah, all that stuff is pretty cool. So I'm, I mean, I'm giving it a one overall for sure to style. I should give it a zero for all those uh, nostalgic references, but but I think they worked. Like so I know, you should I know give you, it a zero. I know you, or you are, but they but they but they worked for me. <laughs> I don't know if that says uh, I'm giving myself a zero. <laughs> I love uh, Stan Lee reading the Mallrats script. Yeah, I, yeah. I noticed that. I was, I, oh. So his cameo was early on. We didn't mention it. I was just saying, can we briefly talk about yeah. Stan Lee since uh, this is his first movie. So this is the first movie since he died, right? First posthumous movie. Yes. Uh, they did a great like tribute to him mm. right in the beginning. Oh, that yeah, was that brilliant. That movie tear up. And then his his uh, cameo was pretty good, too. I think we there was a clap in our um, uh, movie theater. Yeah, I believe so. No, yeah, it was a very nice salute, and I yeah. got to give him credit on that for sure. Yeah. I mean, there's gonna be like five more films with him in it. Yeah, so. yeah. But even so, I wonder yeah. if they'll just do that same intro for the next five movies. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. But either way, overall, damn solid no, stuff. I was actually I'm shocked by the tastefulness of the tribute that they gave. Uh, <laughs> it, Given it's, that it's, it's understated, in you're, a way. Expect, you're expecting much more schmaltzy. I was, but no, this was a very like well done mm-hmm. honor uh, uh, to the to the man who. Helped made it all happen. Yeah. I agree. Like what? Like she crashes into like a early Comic Con and like grabs like a Stan Lee shirt to wear for the rest of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been possible, I suppose. I mean, I've seen terribly done on her. Like, I don't know if you did. That... Yeah, sure. But then, would... like, sorry, this like my mind went this way. But like, if he's reading for Mallrats, like he talks in Mallrats about creating Spider Man and the oh, Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've heard all the. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't look too far. The conspiracy into theories. It. Uh, it's a parallel universe. It's uh, <laughs> where he's just an old man whose son uh, is in this movie. So. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, uh, anyway. On to you with recommendation. Yeah, I, I mean, there's not much of a there's there's a much of a reason not to see it. <laughs> no, I kind of like there, that. If there is, if there is one, I mean, it's it's a fun movie. Great characters. I mean, if you're playing, if you, if you're debating whether or not to see it because you want to know whether or not it's important to Endgame, I mean, not really. But if you want more of an idea of who Captain Marvel, who Carol Danvers is, like what's her deal and how she's going to fit in, go see it. Yeah, I mean, that's I pretty much echo that. It was another like one of you mentioned Ragnarok, and like, well, I think Ragnarok was to me a uh, better or at least an enjoyable more enjoyable film. It had that vibe to it. And yeah, it's a fun movie, like you know, a fun Marvel romp and solidly done overall, so I can't not recommend it. You know, I'm gonna give it a I'm gonna like, yeah. Totally worth Marvel's still doing a good job and this one is really no exception, so Yeah. If you saw the first twenty or twenty one or whatever <laughs> yeah. Yeah, might, well, stop now. Now. <laughs> might as well see this one. Uh yeah, no, it's it's a it's a good movie. Like I said after I got out of the theater, I think I'm going to stick with this. It's like a middling, slightly above middling uh, Marvel movie, you mm. know, like slightly better than the moving average, I guess. And like, yeah, it's it's good. Check it out. I rewatched Ant-Man and the Wasp recently. Yeah. It's good. But Captain Marvel is better than that. Yeah. yeah. And that's right <laughs> where you're saying. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, and this thing is like, I left the theater feeling good. Uh, the dopamine was running through my uh, <laughs> brain or whatever, uh, and yeah, like it's a it's a feel good romp. It, it, yeah, the exactly. ending is exciting, where you're like, yeah, 
go Captain Marvel. And that's what these movies are. <laughs> so if you're watched all of them, watch this one. I might do a poll again. Now I'm now I'm like since we just did a poll for the Oscars. Now I'm like trying to think of things we can do. R- rank all the Marvel movies. It's a hell of a poll. You're gonna get some fights going. Yeah, yeah. that's what I. That's what I'm hoping for. Obviously, I that's want what full. I want full ass fights. What yeah. going for? Oh, there's gonna be a f- <laughs> actual fist fight uh, going on between uh, you and me. Yeah, Stuart. yeah, sounds good. And whatever <laughs> movie you pick, whoever wins a fist fight, that's a wins a poll. All right. Civil War. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lost signal. Civil War. <laughs> but anyway, uh, crawl uh, versus scream. But yeah, I think we all agree Ooh. that that it's a it's a watch movie, right? Recommend. Yep. 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 Yes. For sure. Okay, and uh, us, my friend. Well, three eights, and me with a nine. All right, uh, which giving is it eight point two five overall, uh, which is and I'm one hundred percent comfortable giving uh we have the Marvel that score. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, anyone have anything else to say? I no? gotta fly cool. off in the space. I'm Jonathan Mitchell here with Rich Perry. Yeah, it's been fun. See you tomorrow. Uh yeah. Have a good one. Scott Thurlow. See you next time in space. Editing and engineering by Christopher Morgan. Music by Christopher Morgan. Check us out on YouTube and iTunes for the shows, and on Facebook and Twitter for updates. Or mods? <laughs>